When it comes to the reliability of the Gospels, many Christians believe that their authors were writing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, providing multiple independent, yet perfectly harmonious testimonies about the life and ministry of Jesus. In this video, we will put this belief to the test by comparing the Gospel accounts. There is in fact compelling evidence that the authors of Matthew and Mark were copying from one another. If we compare these two texts, we can see that they are both narrating the same speech of Jesus. Notice the identical comment, let the readers understand, by both authors. This statement is obviously not something that Jesus himself said, but rather is the Gospel author's editorial comment, directed to us, the readers. It is extremely unlikely that two writers would, by pure chance, insert into their accounts exactly the same editorial comment in exactly the same place. The simplest and obvious explanation is that one of the writers was using the material of the other as a source, and copied not only the bulk of the speech of Jesus, but also the same editorial comment. This seriously casts doubt on the traditional understanding that Matthew and Mark were independent eyewitnesses to the life and ministry of Jesus, as it appears that one of the authors was plagiarising the other. Now Christian apologists and missionaries may argue that this is not an issue, so long as the earlier source was inspired, and so long as the later authors were faithful in their copying process, then all the accounts will contain reliable information about Jesus. Let's now put this argument of theirs to the test by comparing the Gospel accounts. The Gospel of Mark mentions the following incident about a woman in a crowd. And a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak, because she thought, If I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately her bleeding stopped. At once Jesus realised that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Here is Matthew's account of the same incident. Just then, a woman who had been subject to bleeding for 12 years came up behind him and touched the edge of his cloak. She said to herself, If I only touch his cloak, I will be healed. Jesus turned and saw her. Take heart, daughter. Your faith has healed you. We can see that the Gospels of Mark and Matthew both narrate a story about a woman who was miraculously healed by touching the cloak of Jesus. In Mark, Jesus is ignorant about who touched him. He had to consult the crowd in order to find out. Contrast this with Matthew who changed the story so that Jesus immediately knew who touched him. The author of Matthew seems to have wanted to portray Jesus in a more powerful light. The Gospel of Mark mentions the following incident about the disciples. Jesus was in the stern, sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said to him, Teacher, don't you care if we drown? He got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. He said to his disciples, Why are you so afraid? Do you still have no faith? Here is Luke's account of the same incident. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided, and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. We can see that the Gospels of Mark and Luke both provide an account of Jesus and the disciples on a boat during a storm. Mark portrays the disciples as rather disrespectful towards Jesus, accusing him of being uncaring. Even the response of Jesus, do you still have no faith, is quite harsh. By comparison, Luke softened the tone considerably not only having the disciples address Jesus more respectfully, but also changing the response of Jesus to, where is your faith? The Gospel of Mark mentions the following incident about a man who questions Jesus. As Jesus started on his way, a man ran up to him and fell on his knees before him. Good teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Why do you call me good? Jesus answered. No one is good, except God alone. Here is Matthew's account of the same incident. Just then a man came up to Jesus and asked, Teacher, what good thing must I do to get eternal life? 
Why do you ask me about what is good? Jesus replied. There is only one who is good. We can see that the Gospels of Mark and Matthew both mention an incident about a man who approached Jesus and questioned him about eternal life. In Mark, Jesus rejected the questioner's praise of him being good, saying that God alone is good. Matthew seems to have been troubled by this and therefore rephrased Jesus' answer very subtly from why do you call me good to why do you ask me about what is good, so as to avoid the difficult implication that Jesus is not completely good. The Gospel of Mark mentions the following incident about the crucifixion. And at three in the afternoon, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? With a loud cry, Jesus breathed his last. Here is Luke's account of the same incident. Jesus called out with a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last. We can see that the Gospels of Mark and Luke both record the dying words of Jesus. In Mark, Jesus is alleged to have cried out in blasphemous despair. Luke's account completely reversed this by placing in the mouth of Jesus the far more stoic and submissive statement, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. In summary, we have seen that the Gospel authors failed to faithfully convey information about Jesus. They were less concerned with accuracy and more concerned with shaping the stories to conform with their own personal theological beliefs. With regards to the question of divine inspiration, it's apparent that the authors themselves did not consider these accounts to be inspired. Otherwise, they would not have tampered with them in such a way. The reality is that the vast majority of Christians are unaware of such changes. This is not surprising because the Gospels are typically read in isolation. It's only when you read them horizontally, comparing the accounts with each other side by side, that the changes become apparent. Let's compare this messy situation of the Gospels to the Islamic sources about the life and teachings of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. His close disciples, known as the Companions, accurately preserved and transmitted much of the information that we know about him today. Here are some examples. In Medina, the messenger of God was thrown from a horse onto a palm trunk and dislocated his foot. After arriving in Medina, the prophet passed by some people who were fertilizing some date palms. He said, I don't think that will provide any benefit. So they refrained from doing it, and that year the crop was not as good. They mentioned it to him, and he replied, If I inform you of something from God, then do it. For indeed, I will never convey an untruth on behalf of God. But if I tell you to do something based on personal opinion, then realize that I am only human. You know better of your worldly affairs. The prophet used to say in his illness from which he died, I still feel the pain of the food which I ate at Khaybar, and now I feel as if my aorta is being severed by that poison. The companions transmitted numerous such incidents that would be considered embarrassing and could even have been used as propaganda by Islam's enemies in order to undermine Muhammad's prophethood. Now, just like the Gospel authors, the companions could have easily suppressed or tampered with such accounts in order to aggrandize and exaggerate the status of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. But they never did. They narrated exactly what they witnessed, which shows us that their main concern was truth. This is one reason why Muslims can be confident that our religion is based on authentic information. To learn the truth about Jesus, please download your free copy of the book, Jesus, Man, Messenger, Messiah, at the link below.